welcome back to another episode of Rats, Mice and Kids, the show where parents become the expert at teaching science to their kids. If we haven't met before, my name's Amelia. And I'm Annie. <laughs> Whoa, that was cool! Whoa, that was wild! <laughs> what would you do that for? It's not very nice shooting marshmallows everywhere, Amelia. I mean, Annie, that's a good question. No matter how cool something is, it can be a bit confusing if no one knows why you actually did it. Often the way we get around this is through storytelling. For our purposes, a story is an account of connected experiences or events that trigger emotions in a person. Stories can help create engagement and interest and develop understanding. They're generally easier to comprehend than the science presented in more traditional ways, like journals, textbooks, lectures, scone web assignments. <laughs> <laughs> the best thing about stories, though, is that they connect strange scientific concepts with common experiences and make the science actually relevant. Like we mentioned in our last video, relevant information has deeper meaning and therefore is more likely to be processed and remembered. Imaginative tools help young children in two ways. Firstly, linking scientific concepts with something familiar increases knowledge retention. Yeah, like in one of my shows, I explain vortexes to children using the example of draining a bathtub. They latch onto that straight away. Yeah, I like that bit. Secondly, stories help to develop strong problem-solving skills by showing complex ideas in creative ways. Of course, we all know that a story needs a beginning, a middle, and an end, and something at least semi-exciting has got to happen as well. Mm. But science stories in particular should motivate the audience to learn and be used as a tool to illustrate abstract concepts. There are a few things to keep in mind, though. Remember, science is non-fiction, and we can't take the same creative liberty that we would might, like, outside of science. <laughs> the most important element of a good story for explaining science is scientific accuracy. We can't invent science or use scientific words and change their meanings like we're in Star Trek. But we can get rid of the jargon. Substrate, flocculation, electrophoresis. Honestly, what do those terms even mean? I don't even know. And I, I've done research for years. <laughs> <laughs> the last consideration is making sure your story is age appropriate. Too mature and the child might get lost. I would get lost. Too immature and the child might get bored. Nothing like falling asleep in a science club, hey? Okay. <laughs> so, having explored the idea of scientific storytelling, let's try our marshmallow cannon one more time. Mm -hmm. Everyone has had to use a vacuum, watch someone with a vacuum, or listen to the humble, infuriating sound of a vacuum. Well, We've come up with a way to make housework a little bit more fun. Picture this. You're vacuuming and totally sick of it. <laughs> what if we could turn our vacuum cleaner into a cannon? <laughs> now, all you need is a bit of pipe um, with a T-joint at one end, some gaff tape to make a flap and maybe a little bit of plastic in there too, Bunnings will have you totally sorted for all of these needs. You then just need to pop your pipe onto the end of your vacuum cleaner tube and you are just about good to go. Hmm? So if I grab my marshmallow and then we just put the marshmallow in like this and we hold it there like for a few seconds and then here is that our boring old vacuum is sucking air through the uncovered end of the tube. This is pulling the marshmallow so hard that it travels in a straight line until it hits the flap at the other end 
and shoots right out. So we've just taken the concept of a vacuum, as in the absence of air, not just the appliance, and velocity, and put them into a very relatable story about a vacuum cleaner. We didn't even need to use the jargon to demonstrate the concept and leave a soft, powdery impression. <laughs> now, every time the child sees a vacuum cleaner, they'll be thinking about science. Parents, this is the win you've been waiting for. Give this demo a go with your kids and let us know what wild stories you spin to teach them the science. Maybe even leave a, leave a message to us in the comments below. Yeah, we'd love that. Amelia and I are science show presenters, but we are also master's students studying science communication and we'd love to improve. So please leave any feedback uh, for us in the comments as well. You can find us on Facebook or Instagram at Rats, Mice and Kids. Happy storytelling. <laughs>